I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. I'm gonna show you how to make a project like this where the main subject is comprised of lots of little small objects, and it was a challenge. I tried several different methods. Getting all the little vector objects is the easy part, and I'll show you how to use Trace Bitmap to take PNG images and turn them into vector objects quickly, but getting them spread out following the contours of the main subject, that was the challenge. You could try to create a pattern pattern fill, but it cuts a hard edge, so nope. I tried fixing the hard edge by dragging nodes. That was a pain. I looked into using the tiled clones trace feature. It was pretty cool, but the project needs more than one shape. I thought the spray tool could work with do not spray over transparent areas enabled. It was okay, but made a sloppy mess. All these led me to two methods I'm gonna show you in this video. A simple object clip with pop objects from group technique, and an even simpler delete what you don't want method. I'll show you how to do that too. If you wanna follow along and wanna be on the same scale, let's get our page settings the same. You want to go to File, Document, Properties. You'll see the menu box come up, and we'll do A4 for the format. Under Orientation, let's turn it to Landscape. And Page, if you click on this page, you can make the page black. And a shortcut to get your page border centered up, just push number 5. Or you could hit this magnifying glass with a rectangle. For our main image, the planet Saturn today, we can make that ourselves using the Circles Ellipsis tool. If you hold the Shift and Control together, you can left mouse click and draw out a nice even circle. This will be the planet part. I can change the color of this to white by using the color ribbon or you can open up object fill and stroke menu and I'm on the fill tab. You can change the fill by moving the little black dot in the middle and you can also drag around the perimeter circle. Take this down back to white. With the circle selected I'll do control D which will duplicate it. It looks the same until I change the top circles fill. We'll make this orange and we'll make the rings out of it. Just like when you're creating the circle if you hold shift and control I'll grab one of the corners this will reduce it exactly along that center point. In a similar way, if you hold shift and grab one of the horizontal handles, it will stretch it along that center point. With it selected, hold Control D. That's going to duplicate the oval. I'll change the top one to something green because I'm now going to use it to stamp out the center. To shrink it in a uniform way, we'll do Shift and Control on one of the top diagonals and bring it in so it's not too far off the edge of the planet. And what I mean by that is right here to here. You don't want this space to look too big or it looks like the way a kid draws Saturn, the planet, and then a not wide enough ring. More or least my kid. I see the green selected, I'll hold shift to also select the yellow path difference. Now we have the rings, but how do we get the planet in there? One simple way is to clip out this part of the rings that goes behind the planet. I'm gonna need my Bezier pen. All we need today is to click and drag a line. It doesn't have to be perfect, we just need it to split up a circle. I'll click on the planet, control D, turn this one darker green. And while you're on the selector tool, you can look at the top, and these are the hierarchy buttons. I want to drop it behind my line. Holding shift, I can collect that line, and we'll do path division. You can see by the dashed line, it's now two parts. I don't need the bottom one. The top green half will now clip out everything exactly behind it. Take both pieces, path, difference. And there it is. Let's tilt it. Click on it once, you'll get your handles that can turn it, and I will tilt it right about there. Just a little bit more visually pleasing. Let's do trace bitmap now, bringing in some PNG images that we can make little vector objects and fill all of this up. I got these PNG images we'll use today from rawpixel.com. They have a public domain catalog. I'll put links in the description, but I found that sometimes these links break over time and you can't find them. rawpixel.com also lets you search by keyword, so you should be able to find these if the links die. This first image I'm dragging from the computer desktop directly into the Inkscape canvas. You'll get a pop-up box. You actually want the import type to be embed. Image DPI from file and image rendering mode none. Okay, it's a rocket ship. Trace bitmap can be found up under path, trace bitmap. You'll get a sidebar menu and you wanna be on, for this example, single scan, detection mode, brightness cutoff. The default is threshold 0.45. Under details, speckles, smooth corners, and optimize are all selected. At the bottom, hit apply. And you can see the selection handles shows that something new is there. And we have a new vector version of the rocket. The fill and stroke menu will let us change the color. So the fill is set to black. Let's move it to something in the red family. 
because some of the objects that you choose for your project might have extra stuff you don't want. I want to show you how to get rid of that because this random stuff, the rocket exhaust, won't look as good when there's lots of little versions of these. This will get too messy. Hit edit paths by node and now you can see how trace bitmap really works. That's why I want to show you this method. Trace bitmap mapped out that entire PNG into lots of little nodes creating the shapes that make the design. And one of the simplest ways to get rid of these nodes you don't want, hold shift, which will let you create a bounding box around all the nodes that you don't feel like having. With the first group here we collected, hit delete. And I'll do the same quickly here. All these nodes are selected, delete. Let's see how much cleaner that is. Oh, we left a piece. We'll get rid of this straggler with the old eraser tool. This is eraser down here. Eraser gets really confusing with new users because the first mode, delete objects touched by eraser, makes you think, if I erase over this little piece, it'll erase that little piece. Well, it erases the whole object. So control Z, undo, don't use that one. These two will work, cut out, drag it right over, it's gone. The whole point is you should get your little object. We can use this one, I guess, today. We'll use this as the filler in case there's extra spaces we wanna fill in. And the beauty of being in vector format, I can scale this and it will always stay sharp. Which reminds me, if you wanna save computing power and go a little faster, you can simplify these, which means we'll reduce the number of nodes it takes to make the whole image. Go to path, simplify. You see, we saved maybe half. There's one. Delete this and get another one. How about this star shape? It's huge. This star PNG happens to have a transparent background already, but for some reason it's carrying this extra space. See how the selection box is bigger than the actual design? Go back to trace bitmap. The default setting of brightness cutoff 0.45 does work pretty well. I'll hit apply. There it is, the vector version. Double click, you can see all those nodes, path, simplify. Next one. Another rocket. Trace bitmap, same settings, apply. There's our vector. I thought we'd go with a satellite. These are getting big. Trace bitmap, apply. I forgot to simplify this one. Path simplify. Star spaceship, satellite, bonus spaceship. Let's cheat and make the last vector object something very simple, the moon. For this, I'll actually do path, object to path. I want the four nice and even nodes here for a future step. For the planet Saturn part, ultimately, I want it to be filled up with all monochrome objects, but I've set different colors here so you can see this method easier. First, we have to spread out all the objects. Inkscape has a very interesting way to do that. Go to Object, Align and Distribute. We're gonna use the Spray Tool feature, but rather than try to get it in the circle, we're gonna make a giant field, a random array spread out evenly, not overlapping, using these rearranged settings. Here's how the Spray Tool works. Whichever object you select, we'll do the satellite here. When you click on the tool, it will shoot that object out over and over based on however you set it up in the modification area at the top. For mode, we'll be on the first one, spray copies of the initial selection. Width, I only need it set to one because I want to shoot a lot in the same area. Amount, 50. Rotation, 50. Scale, 50. Scatter, 50. Focus one. I also set width the one because I wanted a nice balance in the settings here. One, all 50s, one. Actually on the end, make sure you have the first eyeball open, apply over no transparent areas. Seems like an oxymoron, but just keep it selected. Also click on apply over transparent areas and don't touch the rest of it. Satellite has been chosen. I'm gonna spray out by holding the left mouse button down and just make a mess. Just keep going over the same area. I just need quantity here, not quality. Toggle back to selector. We'll go to the star spray can and just pile them on top. It really doesn't matter how many you do because we can always multiply it as needed. Now our moon. I don't like how big the moon is. Delete. Control Z that. It's going to spray out different scaled items, but if the starting item is too big, it just gets messy. That's better. A little tip for when you're choosing what objects you want to use. The more they fill up a square, the better. So like a circular one that's even, that works well. The satellite works okay. A star, this one's not perfectly symmetrical, but you get the idea. And we'll go to the rocket. I can see that there's less rockets coming out, probably because this one has the most nodes. So even though I have the amount up here set to 50, I don't think 50 are coming out. All right, so there they are. They're in a big pile. I'm going to say goodbye to all of these to keep it clean. Click and drag over the entire pile so they're all selected. We have rearranged settings we can do, which are pretty powerful. But all we really need is to remove the overlaps. I'm going to go with a 1 and 1. Click to apply. 
There we go. The black rocket ships on the black page make the gaps look bigger than they are. I pulled on a portion of our field here. If you're going for pure speed and you want to run with this, you can. That's why we have that filler vector object at the end. You could stamp that in where you feel like you need to. But I want to go one more pass at remove overlaps. And I found when playing with this, it does help to kind of group them closer to the center. And I want to multiply the amount we have. I've got them all collected here. Control D will duplicate, hit that whole group, and I'll turn it a touch here. Grab it all and redo remove overlaps. Apply. I'll take it. This is pretty good. I drag Saturn back into our field and I can take a look to see where do I want to line it up. I like where this group of stars hits the top, so I'll go with that. I only need the part of the field that's in this area, but I don't want to delete everything else yet because we're going to use it for the rings. I'm taking this part out with Control D, duplicating the selection, and dragging one up here. Group the field of objects, object, group. The planet now becomes our clipping box. Change that to something green. At the bottom of the menu, you can change the opacity so you can see through your clipping object. I think this will do well for our purposes lined up right like that. Grab everything, object, clip, set clip. And that gets us almost there. Let's clean up the hard edge. The solution is a kind of hidden feature. I double click to get this particular star, right click, and you'll see a choice that says pop selection out of group. And there it is. Now you can choose along the perimeter of your object what is going to come back into the pattern and what will be deleted. I might say this portion of the moon isn't necessary. I can hit delete or I can drag it into my field. The satellite is close enough. Right click, pop selection out of group. If I pop this star, it might adversely affect the outer edge. I'll drag it in. But this satellite can definitely be popped. And you can do more than one at a time. Get one selected, hold shift, and you can collect more. Take that star, take this ball, that star. I quickly went around the whole planet. And if you're nervous about hitting the mouse again, you might deselect. You can also go up to object, pop selected objects out of group. There you go. Let's make them all the same fill color. There's orange, we'll do white. I can use that bonus rocket ship to fill in these holes here. But before I do that, I can also drag in some of the outliers. This one was too far over the edge, but I can use it in here. Here's a little tip. If I take one of these stars and you wanna get right up to where that imaginary edge was, push it towards the edge, you'll start to see it vanish like it's going to a different dimension and bring it back till you see where that edge hits. You can also just totally cheat. Grab one of your inner objects, drag it around and you can hit the space bar to stamp out the actual vector object. I'm afraid to do too many before rotating it so the viewer doesn't catch a pattern. All right, enough of that. As a reminder, here is that filler object we made. I created three versions, just pointing different directions, different scales, and let's stamp it around if we see some open space. You can make any objects you want into any bigger shape that you want, but for speed, let's move this into place. I'll group everything. Now I can take it as one unit. Look at that on the black. I like the density on this, and I purposely chose some designs that had some interesting almost textures to it, like the solar panels here, the shading on the rocket ship, and I also do like the balance of the solid objects, like the cheat moon. It's time now for the rings. I conveniently doubled up the field when you weren't looking, and I've got my rings that I will turn into green, translucent and see where do we want to put this right there looks good i do know to make it work smoother i want it off for a second so i can group just this all the pieces are grouped we'll take the rings put it back there shift to grab the whole field object clip set clip Zoom in for our pop-outs. I'll speed this up in the edit now after we pop out this group here. Object, pop selected objects out of group. There they are. I think I promised to show you the delete what you don't want method also. That is done by holding shift and grabbing outside of your clipping area. If you took way too much, you can hold shift again and select that outlier or something you know is already in. And I'll take all of these object, 
pop selection out. Back to the eraser tool and not the second one this time, go back to the first one, delete objects touched by eraser. When you click and drag, you'll get a red line and anything it touches is gonna be taken away. I think this method might help if you're doing a more complicated shape than just an oval. You can drag the overlay right on top of your field and delete the parts you don't want. I'll clean up the edges off camera and we'll put them together. Through the magic of editing, I think we've got it where we need it. I will group everything. The big box is for the clipping shape and all the stuff I stamped in extra or popped out. You can see in the small boxes, object, group. I think I'll recolor. That's actually the yellow I want. It just doesn't look right on the gray. Bring it back to the project area. I popped in the original shape as a guide to see where do we want to put this in. Plus, it'll look a little better if we clear out the underlying vector objects of the planet. Double click a few times so you can isolate one of the objects. And when you hold shift, you can gather more of them. Some of you old pros might be thinking you should use the alt selector tool to make that red line, which will select anything you touch. But for some reason, it will crash Inkscape instantly. Or at least it has been for me. One more cheat. I'll drag anything that's still in the area onto the planet. You can always stamp out more when you see it all together. Here it is, the moment of truth. There we go. Can't remember where it came from, if it was Twitter or YouTube comments, but I definitely appreciate if this was your idea. It was a video game sample that you sent with the request. So if it was you, thank you. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and see you next time.